You're listening to Puck Up the Airwaves. <laughs> hey, uh, we're with Rob Ruckus from A and B's Bad Ink. But uh, you know, we don't really watch fucking reality shows, man, because we love punk rock and shit. You're in a band called The Vermin, though. Oh yeah, so that's, what we, we, that's what we came here to talk to you about, man. <laughs> and uh, well, we so, got all kinds of stuff we can talk about. Right? Yeah, I, I'll, I will we'll talk about the bad ink and all that shit, too, and all, you know, <laughs> fucking yeah. it's like being a tattoo artist and all of that shit, but... Shit, I don't so how you doing, man? Are you good today? Everything's good, man. Can't complain at all, man. Life's good out. It's a beautiful day in Vegas. And course, uh, I got right? the day off from the museum, so I can't complain, man. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's another thing. This motherfucker uh, runs the fucking uh, punk rock goddamn... Uh, Hall of Fame Museum, right? Yeah, the Punk Rock Museum out here in Vegas, man. The place That's is absolutely amazing. amazing. You got to come out here and check it out. And hey, once we get that uh, invite, you know what I mean? The fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, this is my boy Tuna. How you What's doing? What's up, Tuna? All right, man. Good. Hey, so exactly when did you guys start, man? Because I see that you were called... Uh, Venus or uh, from or the vermin from Venus, right? Okay, so yeah, ver vermin ended about ten years ago. Um, pretty much after we did the TV show, but we we lasted shit about twenty years uh, before that. And you know, I've been I've been playing out here in Vegas for forty years. You know, I first uh, first gig out here was the Dead Kennedys, Butthole Surfers, MIA, the cop and a couple local bands, Subterfuge and MIA, uh, MIA with the local bands. Um, and, you know, I got the bug, you know, a year later, I started my first band, booked my first VFW hall, booked all the local bands and just haven't turned back since then, you know, I've just constantly been playing in as many bands as possible, booking bands from all over the world. Um, you know, and then the TV thing came along. We did the show for a while. And then, you know, now I'm at the Punk Rock Museum. So it, it's, I'm still living the life. <laughs> 40 yeah. years, 40 years. And I'm, I'm still just doing this every single day. It's amazing. What are you doing at the Punk Rock <laughs> Museum? Um, so Punk Rock Museum um, opened up uh, April Fool's Day of this year. So we're not even a full year yet. Um, what I'm doing over there is I run the jam room, which is upstairs. Um, so I got a room where we've got, I got Joan Jett's guitar. I've got Tim Armstrong's first rancid guitar. I got Pat Smears, the last show he played with the germs, the first few shows he did with Nirvana's guitar. I got Chet, Chet, uh, Chet Lair's guitar from Wasted Youth. So the album, you know, the album Reagan's in by Wasted Youth. I have that guitar and that amp this room and I can plug it in for you and you can play it. So, you know, like every day I'm playing problem child or fuck. And 
through the actual guitar and the amp that you know that that played those songs in 1982. <laughs> wow. So there's a lot. I got Norwood from Fishbones bass up there. I got all Fat Mike's equipment up there. I got his amp from the So Long and Thanks for All the Shoes. I got his bass that he toured with for years. I got all Fletcher's equipment for Pennywise. I got Wesley Willis's keyboard up there. <laughs> I mean, you could play Rock and Roll McDonald's because it's got the presets on it. It's amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, that's the museum awesome. is just it's just such an amazing place man i'm i'm so glad that it happened in vegas so i could be a part of it you know when fat mike called me up and was like hey dude i'm doing this you know we need a vegas section i just went down to go check it out you know i just went to go you know i brought my flyer collection and my i donated my bass to him i donated my my old ampeg amp to him um, and I just went down to go check it out and I'm like, this is the most amazing thing ever. I just, I need to be a part of this. So now I run the jam room. I do all the silk screening. I print all the shirts for them down there, uh, book some of the stuff. I do tours there every Thursday. So every Thursday, all through the day, if you come down, I'll, I'll just buy a regular general admission ticket. It doesn't cost any extra. I'll walk you through the entire building, pointing out you know, Joan Jett's outfit, Dee Dee Ramone's wedding ring, the Misfits, the broken bass, Johnny Thunder's guitar, all the stamper to make the germs first 45. Um, and then and then there's new stuff too. There's stuff by new bands too. So it's not just all we have Joe Strummer's Telecaster, like the actual Clash 101ers, Mescalero's guitar he used throughout his entire career. We have it down there. You know, it, it, nice. it's an amazing place, man, especially if you're, you know, and even if you're not into the music, even if you just lived through that time and you saw it on TV or you saw the fucking weirdos walking up and down the street, you know, and you fought with them and we fought with them a lot, <laughs> you know, especially out here in Vegas, you know, it was a mafia town. They didn't like us. You know, we had to we had to fight for our piece of the pie out Three here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an amazing place. And then and then what happens there? You know, the yeah. the yeah. tour guides that come through there, you know, Des from Black Flag will walk you through and tell you stories about all the stuff that's in there. Uh Monkey from the Attics, Greg Hetson, Fat Mike. Uh, Don Bowles from the Germs, Pat Bag, I mean uh Alice Bag. You know, it's just CJ Ramon and then band, you know, guys from newer bands too. It's, 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 it's pretty amazing. The stuff that happens down there, man, I've got to play with some of my absolute heroes. You know, I got to jam with Des Kadena. I got to jam with Alice bag. You know, she, she, I, I brought my first, the first bags 45. I brought down there for her to sign the day she was doing tours and she goes, oh, my God, you got one of the originals. You know, there wasn't many of these made. She goes, you know this record? I'm like, I know it like the back of my hand. I've had this for 40 years. <laughs> and she's like, well, do you know Babylonian Gorgon? I'm like, yeah, I love that song. She's like, can you play it on guitar? I'm like, well, I've never done that before. She goes, here's your homework. Go home tonight. Learn that on guitar. When I get done with my tour tomorrow, I'll bring everybody upstairs. You play guitar and I'll sing it with you. And oh, we wow. did. And it was amazing. <laughs> you know a few weeks back fat mike calls me i'm sitting upstairs tuning guitars and fat mike calls me and he's like hey dude lucky lara from the circle jerks is there now i got into punk 40 years ago when decline of western civilization came out i i wore that movie out as a kid you know and watching lucky playing drums was one of the major reasons man he just always struck me as the most amazing punk rock musician because he was a jazz drummer before punk rock even happened. He was a badass before he even got into punk, you know? So 40 years later to get to, to get the chance, you know, Fat Mike calls me, he's like, Lucky's downstairs. I'm like, well, what, do you want me to go talk to him till you get here and keep him busy? He's like, no, pick up a guitar, learn three Circle Jerk songs right now. We're <laughs> gonna jam with that motherfucker. And I'm like, well, I want to play bass. He's like, I'm fucking playing bass. You know, I mean, I can't argue with him. It's my boss. <laughs> Um, so I picked up a guitar. I figured out, you know, Beverly Hills, Century City. I just want some skank and and uh, some something else, man. And then we went downstairs and jammed with Lucky, and he is just as badass now as he was forty years ago. Wow. 
Wow. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's just such an amazing place, man. I'm living in Germany. He was a fucking, he was all over the place, man. I'm sorry? Yeah, he was crazy all over the place. He was all over yeah, the place. Yeah, man. And he still makes them faces. You know? <laughs> 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 so who's your favorite uh, out of everybody that's been there? Um, well, God, I'm, I have to say, jam, jamming with Des was pretty amazing. But like CJ Ramon, absolute sweetheart. You know, I, again, something I for I've been following for forty years. You know, I mean, I learned how to play bass along with the first Ramones record, and then for forty years later, for one of the Ramones to come there. And he's been there a few times now. He's he's done tours there at least at least three different times. And me first in the Gimme Gimmies has played there, who he's playing with now. So he's been there quite a few times. So this the this last time he was in town, I come walking up to the door to the museum and I got a guitar in one hand and a bag of stuff in my other hand. And CJ opens the door and gives me a hug. And this is like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm walking into work getting hugged by a Ramon. <laughs> insane. Insane, man. It's absolutely really? insane. But it's it's just such a wonderful place. And you never know who I never know who I'm gonna run into when I go into work. You know, we had the guys from AOD there last week. Channel three played there a couple weeks ago. Um the I had the darts play there last week, you know, speaking of music. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I never know who I'm going to run into in the place, man. It's just, the place is amazing. So they and have like a, a, a few blocks from my house is just even better. <laughs> so they have like a, a jam room and like a regular, a rain, like a stage. There's a couple jam rooms. Play so we, don't, we, don't have sta- we don't have a stage because we don't, we don't really have shows there. Okay, on, it's know, just a, a jam room. Basis. DIY all the way, baby. Exactly. So, like the downstairs is pretty much all the museum, and then the get the you walk into the gift shop, you go through the museum. We have the bar. We have a bar on the side. It's called the Triple Down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you go upstairs, and then there's all the newer bands and the jam room and a tattoo shop and a wedding chapel that also uh, subs as an art gallery. So, like right now, we have Brian Walsby stuff up there. The guy that did the Seven Seconds Walk Walk Together Rock Together album cover. Right. We have all of his art up there on the walls right now. The Nardcore covers, uh, the Scared Straight records he did. You know, all that stuff's hanging up in there right now. Oh wow! And people go in there and get married in the middle of it. It's fucking great. <laughs> wow, that's fucking amazing, dude. Uh, Jack from TSOL, another one when he came through. He, he he came through, did tours for everybody, and then went upstairs to that chapel room, set up the little you know podium, and read from his books. Wow! And I don't know yeah. if you've read Jack Grisham from TSOL's books, but you should. They're great. <laughs> Talk about some fucked up punk rock stories, man. He's got the best ones. <laughs> you got any crazy, real crazy stories you want to give up? Um. Well, shit, you know, there's lots of them, man. You know, I mean, uh, especially you get since risque, I you get risque on me. this. Uh, you know, we cuss, we huh? cuss, and all that. you get risque on this one, buddy. Right on, right on, right on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of them. I mean, going back, you know, one that I tell every week when I do the uh, when I do the tours there is uh, we opened up for the Vandals, my first band, Ruckus, in 1984. Nice. And back then, the Vandals were a different band. It's not the same people that are in the band, the Vandals now. The guys in the Vandals Joe, now, Joe right? Escalante and Warren and them, they're fucking sweethearts. They're some of the nicest, sweetest people I've ever met in my life. But Steve-O and Human and Jen and those guys, the original Vandals, they were not the sweetest people in the world. They were insane, maniac, crazed, drug addict, alcoholic <laughs> bastards, you know? And, and I love them. Don't get me wrong. But when we opened up for him, I had my dad go down and videotape the show. Um, it was <laughs> PPU, which was a local band, the Punk uh, Underground, my band Ruckus, and then MIA, and then the Vandals played. And the Vandals afterwards went and surrounded my dad. Now, my dad was a big-ass biker dude, man, long hair, big beard. He was loped, you know, that wore his colors. 
he was a big dude, you know, and they went and they surrounded him. I see what's going on. I run over. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's my dad. You know, he's evil. Fuck, we, why the fuck is this guy videotaping us? We don't know him. He's going to try to sell it. Fuck this. And I'm like, no, no, no. That, I had him come what? down and film the show. They're like, fuck that. We don't want him filming us. So it's like, all right, look, it's already done. We're going to rewind the tape. We're going to hit record and we're going to fucking point it at the wall and record over you guys then. Okay, cool, cool. Everything's cool. So I go back to putting my gear away and just something tells me to look back. And I look back and I see Steve-O and human nudging each other, man. And the next thing you know, man, they shove my dad and he's off the, you know, it's a good four and a half, five foot tall stage and he's down. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I grabbed my base and I crowned Steve-O, man, just knocked his ass out straight to the head, man, put his ass out. Human grabs a bottle, clobbers me. My dad gets back up. <laughs> um, it becomes this big fight, man. We get in this huge fight with the Vandals. So security shows up. They break us apart. Vandals, you grab your gear. You guys unload first. You guys take off. Local guys, you wait a minute. Let them go. And then you're, you're next. As they load up, Steve-O goes out and stabs all four of my dad's tires on his 1972 black Dodge van that looks like the A-Team. It's got a spoiler and shit. I mean, Jesus. that was his pride and joy, man. Stabbed all four. So 14-year-old me, Daddy, would you go to the punk rock show with me and film it? And he gets in a fight with the Vandals and, wow. <laughs> and gets all four of his tires stabbed. So needless to say, he didn't go see my bands play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't ask for a horrible, horrible story. <laughs> <laughs> but I still love That's those awful. guys. I mean, I was still friends with those guys. I still loved them until the day they died. And pretty much all of them are all dead now. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, another good one I always point out in there is because as we're walking through the museum, you know, there's a big Vegas section in there. And Vegas had a great scene back in the day and still today. You know, I mean, it's still, we have punk rock bowling out here. We have a punk rock museum here. So the scene out here is banging. I don't care what they say in American hardcore or any of those other goddamn books that are bullshit saying that Vegas didn't have a scene. We had Subterfuge, uh, who was on Mystic. We had MIA, who was on Alternative Tentacles. 5150 was our local misfits. You know, I played with Self Abuse for, you know, goddamn the past damn near 30 years you know we had a lot of great bands out here man and a great scene um that's part of the reason the museums in vegas too is because back then we started gigs out here it was they were in warehouses but then the cops got hip to it especially after the dead kennedy show uh because we rented two of them and kicked the wall down between the two of them to accommodate everybody so the cops got hip to it so we started doing gigs in the middle of the desert Vegas was very well known for many, many, many years as being the place is. If you're going to play de Vegas, you're playing in the desert. And back then, before cameras and, you know, all this shit, um, you could go to a construction site and just steal a generator and a couple of halogen lights and a big piece of carpet and take 800 kids and no effects or the offspring or white zombie or uh, the effigies, or Corrosion of Conformity, or all the, the Rob Howard from Italy, all these bands, their first gigs in Vegas were out in the desert. <laughs> and no effects, too. They were so close. Vegas is so close to L.A. A lot of the very early no effects shows, the first shows they did on the road were in Vegas. And, you know, we would... They would follow us to our apartments afterwards and stay with us. That's how we became friends 40 years ago. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and luckily for them, they blew up and became great and started their own label and hooked up a whole shitload of bands. <laughs> do I like all the bands? No, not necessarily. But, you know, do I love what they did? Fuck, you know, helping out all their friends and hmm. using that money to fucking build a punk rock museum? That's some cool fucking shit, man. I don't care what anybody has to say about Fat Mike, man. He does some cool shit. Yeah, you can't like every band, you know what I mean? But that no, doesn't make it not rock rock. And, and believe me, I mean, I am a, a vinyl obsessed. I mean, I have thousands and thousands of records in here, but I only have the first two no effects 45s that I got from them back in the day. I haven't <laughs> bought any of that <laughs> records. <laughs> <laughs> not saying that they're a bad band. I like I like them. That's just that's not what I collect. 
So what's your favorite record so. that you collect? My what's favorite. Your pride and joy. Lose. What's your pride and joy? As of right now, um, I just I'll show you. <laughs> I just went the other day to this uh antique shop down on Main Street. Now, um, I was in a band called the Bloodcocks for a few years, and I got to tour Japan four or five times, and uh, for a few weeks at a time. So I've spent months in Japan. Um, huge, huge fan of the Michelle Gun Elephant, who ended up becoming Rosso, who ended up becoming The Birthday. Um, Rosso was a very, very little known band, um, you know, especially outside of Japan, and they didn't make much stuff. But I found this the other day in this uh, antique mall, and it's Rosso's Bird. And I got it for like $30. You know, it was a weird Japanese record they didn't know anything about, obviously. I brought it home. I looked it up on Discogs. There's one available in Japan, and that's it. And it's like $3,500. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, as of right now... That's that's the cream of the crop, but uh, shit, I don't know, man. I, I just I got any anything you could think of. I probably got it. I've been collecting for forty records for forty years, so I think any band I played with or that to? came through Vegas, I got their shit. <laughs> right. Well, what are you listening to lately? That's uh, you probably enjoy. That you really that's something new. Um, lately I've been doing a lot of, a lot of, uh, sixties garage stuff. I'm, pl I'm currently playing in a band called, uh, the shake wells with turbo who I used to play in the vermin with. Um, and getting back to the beginning of that, let me, let me not just gloss over the vermin because the vermin was a pretty amazing thing out here in Vegas. Um, it was me, Dirk vermin and turbo proctor. Um, it was more of a comedy act than a band. Um, you could go see the vermin and literally we could go 20 minutes in between playing songs, just talking shit, talking shit about the bands that played before us, talking shit about the bands that's playing afterwards, tag, talking shit about the bands playing down the street, talking shit about the chick in the front with the fucking buck teeth, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it could be anything. And we, we, it was like going to see Don Rickles because we were just, we would just bag on everybody and then play a bunch of punk rock songs in the middle of it. And we did it for 20 years. So, I mean, we, we put out five albums, you know, a bunch of singles. We got to, you know, we went out to as far as New York, you know, we never really toured much, but, you know, we'd go play New York, we'd go play LA, we'd go play certain places, you know, every, a couple times a year. But we were mostly a Vegas experience. You had to come here to be a part of it, you know, because... You go to other some other towns and start talking shit like that, you're gonna get your ass kicked. <laughs> so we mostly kept it to Vegas, but it was it was a pretty amazing band, man. We 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 offended everybody. <laughs> play CBGBs? You mentioned New York. Uh, we, didn't, play we didn't play CBGBs. We played uh Hanks in Brooklyn. Um where, where, uh Otto Shrunken Head. A bunch of times we did the double down because we'd go out there for the double down anniversaries we right. were like the house band at the double down in las vegas so when he opened up the one in in the village we we would we, we would go down for the anniversaries and then play a bunch of shows around that there down there right yeah i like that one what's the what's the song it's like uh hold on a second i, I had it written somewhere around here Go for the throat, a go go. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a great song. <laughs> that is a great song. Here. Yeah. Oh, there was a good one. Santa was a cross dressing Nazi. I mean, there's there all kinds yeah. of great songs from that band. <laughs> Fuck you, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, let's talk about the Shake Wells in now. Um, we, do have well, a, yeah. we do have a nine minute warning. I just want to let you know we do have a nine minute warning already. Right. So, on, right. Yeah, on. Yeah, cool. Zoom only gives us a little bit of time to do these. <laughs> no worries, man. No worries. Um, yeah, so Shake Wells. Shake is Wells, man. It's a little bluesy, right? A little bluesy. Shake, well, Shake Wells, what we're doing now, is it's kind of like more like a 60s punk. You know, before it was called right. punk, you know, kind of like the Sonics, the Monks, you know, some some old good 60s garage shit. So Farfisa driven, uh, fuzz guitar. You know, I, I'm I'm using an old custom tuck and roll bass amp and just playing it as hard as I fucking can to make it distort as much as possible. 
And it's just good old school, mid-tempo, danceable punk. And it, it's just been a blast. We played with the Bore Outs from uh, Detroit last week with Co from the Dirt Bombs and Jason from the Suicide Machines. Uh, we played with Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols last Tuesday at the Hard Rock or the Virgin Hotel, it's called now. It's the old Hard Rock. Mm-hmm. But uh, we played with Glenn Matlock and uh, Glenn Matlock, Clem Burke from Blondie was playing drums. Uh, Fishman nice. uh, was was playing bass, who played with Hugh Cornwell and the Stranglers, and uh, he's played in the Damned and a whole bunch of bands. And then Gilby Clark from Guns N' Roses was playing guitar, but nice. it was nice. badass, man. I mean, and then after we get done playing, to have someone like Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols come up to me and Clem Burke, you know, who I, I've been listening, I've had their records for forty years, for them to be to be able to give them one of my records. And have it in their collection 40 years later and then have them say dude i really liked your stuff amazing you know like i said i'm living in a dream man <laughs> so you do have the souvenirs is that still uh, going on yeah we're still doing the souvenirs too and then uh the shake wells will be playing at punk rock bowling this year with uh guitar wolf from japan uh the lords nice. of altamont and the schizophonics so that's going to be a pretty badass show Okay, where's um, that at then, again? What's that? Where's that at again? At Punk Rock Bowling this year. It's okay. going to be at the usual place. It's one of the club shows uh, for Punk Rock Bowling this year, and it'll be at the usual place. Is what it's called. So the, the souvenirs and uh, so and the, yeah, souvenirs. Yes, yeah, yeah, Brian told though. me you were a ska band. I was like, man, this ain't ska. No, you said jazz. No, I was like, no, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a. It's like a fusion it's not band. Like a no, it's, not, it's not ska. It's not Definitely ska. Not it's like, a, like a 30s, 40s, 50s jazz. So what it is, is it's me and Pablo, uh, Paul Schwartz from MIA, the old punk band MIA. He was right. living up in a cabin in Brian Head Mountain. No running water, no power. You want to get warm, go cut down a fucking tree and burn it. If you want water, go to the creek and get some water. You know what I mean? And he lived up there for like 16 years. He had this little cassette recorder, little Radio Shack cassette player, and he would listen to all these old jazz tapes and learn these weird old chords. He figured out all these songs. And then when he moved back to Las Vegas, I'm like, dude, let's start doing these songs. So we got like a hundred songs set. We play at the Mob Museum all the time. And it's like the Reefer Man and, uh, you know, uh, oh God, what's, what's it called? Shit, I'm drawing. I'm drawing a blank right now on our songs, but <laughs> we have a lot of them. You know, it's 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 just a bunch of the old jazz stuff. You know, a bunch of old Louis Jordan, Louis Prima, Louis Armstrong. You know, we do all the Louis, <laughs> but you know, it's a bunch of rock dudes doing it. So it's not, it's the real jazz chords, but it's just played with a little more rock style. Yeah. Now, now, are you singing for that? I do a little. I do a lot of a lot of backups for it. Um, I okay. do sing a couple songs, but mostly Pablo does because he has an angelic voice. And uh, oh, we have so Tiff- Tiffany say, Fred. Man. Tiffany Fred Nelly is our is our female uh, vocalist on that one too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was a couple females. Yep. Songs on it. So yeah. Um. Uh, is there anything? Uh. You know what? Hold up. What exactly got you into punk rock? Was it a buddy or something like that? Or you know. Why'd you get into um, punk rock? Um, what what got me in is actually there was a guy that lived down the street from my folks' house as a kid, and I would be skateboarding around the neighborhood, and I would hear him listening to the college station on his car stereo out in the parking lot in the driveway, and I would just kind of skate a little more towards his house so I could hear what this weird stuff he was playing. <laughs> And then one day he asked my dad, he goes, hey, do you mind if I take Rob to a show? And that was that Dead Kennedy show. And that show just, it's just still burned into my mind. I mean, I, I can still hear, you know, it's two more days till 1984. Two more shopping days till 1984. Jello, you know, <laughs> Jello Biafra's voice, you know, <laughs> it's burned into, you know, so it just, that day just, it, it changed me. 
but I had always been a music fan. I mean, my entire life, you know, I, mean, I remember the day Elvis died, you know, I mean, I, I, I was a massive Elvis fan before, you know, when I was seven years old, you know, in 1976. So, you know, I, I was an Elvis fan. <laughs> and then when I we all became were, a teenager, I found punk rock and just dove straight in. Yeah, that was, you know, it was the most righteous. Yeah, most, and uh, I mean, you know, you know and especially, like I said, about growing up in Vegas, you know, it was a dangerous place to be a punk back then. You know, I mean, it was run by the mob. The rest of the town was run by a bunch of cowboy, desert cowboys. You know, desert cowboys and mobsters and cops hate fucking punk rock kids. They don't want to see a purple mohawk and fuck Reagan on the back of your jacket anywhere. Just like the L.A. punks couldn't go to Disneyland, we couldn't go to the Strip or Fremont Street without getting our asses kicked or having to beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> it was a constant yeah. fight. So, it, you know, it, we had to find our tribe. And that's what the wonderful thing about punk rock is, is we found our tribe and our tribe won. You know, this punk rock museum proves it every day. You know, I walk through there and I see folk punk and I see, you know, the new bands and the offspring selling 30 million records on an independent label. I mean, we changed culture back. You know, originally punk rock was scary as fuck. Having blue hair was a dangerous, scary thing to do. Now grandma's got it. It's no big deal. You know, we changed culture. Punk rock won. <laughs> we took an ass whooping, but we won. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there, too, man. It's in there. Hey, so what got you into tattooing? Um, okay, so the whole thing with the TV show Bad Ink, I was just an actor. I'm not a tattoo artist. Um, I've, I've gotten lots and lots of tattoos. I started with a black flag one when I was, you know, 16, 17 years old. Um, but I was never a tattoo artist. Dirk, on the other hand, the guy that the other guy on the show is an amazing tattoo artist. You know, reality TV is what it is. It's bullshit. Um, he, 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 you know, when the show happened, we were sold to a couple of networks at first, the guy that's put on the show, uh, sharp entertainment went and bought it back from Ted Turner and walked it into A and E and got us on the air there. It, he was an amazing dude, but they had to rush that show and they had to do it quick. So nobody could know about a tattoo cover up show. So the other tattoo cover up shows that came along and fucked, fucked with us, <laughs> Um, wouldn't happen at the same time. So they were trying to beat him to the punch. So Dirk had to cover up some fake tattooing, which sucks because he is that talented where he didn't need to fake a fucking goddamn thing. So he was branded as 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 a, as a fake. Uh, and, and I understand why he hates that television show. You know, it, it's part of the reason we don't hang out together anymore. Um, and he's kind of a, you know, he's a punk son of a bitch too. You know, he's, he's a punk rock motherfucker. So he's hard to deal with, you know, just like I am. So when he got the show originally, it was just him. I went down there just to watch my friend have a TV show. But since we were in the Berman for 20 years, we had a rapport. You know, our back and forth was nonstop. I mean, you know, so I, we went down there and we made everybody laugh, you know, off camera. And then like, we need this guy on the show with him. So that's how I got brought on. I'm not a tattoo artist. I've, I've tattooed one guy in my life. His name was Jerry. He's been dead for over 20 years.
Me a thrill. 